Good evening. And welcome to all who are here and all who are watching. We are pleased to have you join in our Eucharistic celebration. There is only one collection for this weekend, our regular collection. This can be placed in one of the three baskets around church. As always, we thank you for your continued support. Our announcements. Today, Father will do a general blessing of the throats in honor of the Feast of St. Blaise, which will be on February 3rd. If you are available to assist on Saturday, February 6th, at 10 a.m. to take down our Christmas decorations. Please join us. During the month of January 2021, at our Mother of Sorrows, the St. Francis Food Pantry welcomed 184 guests, and we fed a total of 766 people. Thank you to our volunteers, guests, and all who, those who support the Neighbors in Need collection. We still have some of the Do Something Beautiful for God books left. This daily reflection book is filled with short but meaningful reflections by Mother Teresa. Please be sure to take one if you don't have one. Ash Wednesday is on February 17th. We will have two Masses here that day, one at 7.30 a.m. and one at 5.30 p.m. We will be distributing ashes, but not as we have in the past. We will be sprinkling them on your head as directed by the bishop. As we prepare ourselves, let us turn our attention to the altar, where the holy sacrifice of the Mass will be celebrated by Father Kaufis on this, the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Church is one foundation. Good evening, everyone. We welcome everyone to this Eucharistic celebration. Those here in church, we're so pleased to see you and those joining us on our live stream. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, today in the Gospel, we're reminded that Jesus has authority, authority over unclean spirits. And so, as we begin this Mass, let us submit ourselves to the authority, to the love and the mercy that comes to us in Jesus. Let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love every one in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will, will the Lord, your God, raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord, your God, at Horeb, on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord, our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If, if today, today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today we hear his voice, our hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, are in our hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, are in our hearts. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in the land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. The gospel we just heard reminds us that our Lord has power, authority. He has authority over anything that threatens, anything that would diminish our life. He has authority over demons. The Gospel account reminds us that there are evil forces within the world. There's one in this Gospel narrative, and there are many throughout the world. That's a hard thing to hear, and it's a hard thing to say. But remember what I just said at the beginning of this homily. The Lord has power. The Lord has authority over anything that would diminish or threaten our lives. And the closer that we can be to God, the closer that we can be with Him, then we too will have control. We too share in that authority that resides in Jesus. In simply calling out the demon in this gospel, the Lord demonstrates his authority. Simply acknowledging that this demon was there was the first way that Jesus freed the man who was suffering as a result of the demon. If we do not believe that evil exists, evil would be even more powerful. But in recognizing the presence of demons, the presence of evil in, in the world, we are able to remember what I first opened this homily with, God has authority over anything that would threaten each of us. And so evil does exist. And the best way, the best way to extend this power over evil in our own lives is to recognize 
that God is in control. Several years ago, I had a, a colleague that I worked with at a nonprofit in Rochester, an African American woman. And she was not a Catholic, she was a Baptist. And I remember speaking with her, her name was Sam. And Sam shared with me the way that she shared the authority of God whenever she felt threatened. She would say in this kind of a southern drawl to any demon that she was intimidated at first by, she'd say, get out of my way. I don't have time for you today. And those prayers, that simple saying, is something that we can also say. It's something that we should say, that we need to say. Because we recognize that just as there is the presence of a demon in this gospel parable, this gospel story, they still exist. And if we think they are not around, then they have even more power. But through a life of prayer, by saying what Sam taught me all those years ago, get out of my way, I don't have time for you today, the power of God is at work. And we share in that authority that freed that man in Capernaum from that evil force. And so recognizing that there are evil forces in our world, the very best way, my brothers and sisters, for us to combat this reality is through a life of prayer, a life of faith, and a life celebrating the sacraments. A sacramental life, a faith life, and a prayer life. And really, all three of those different lives are connected into one life, a life of holiness, a life in which we submit to the authority that resides in Jesus Christ, who has come not to intimidate us, but to give us life. Certainly not to threaten us, but to guide us and to bring us his message of healing and peace. Notice how this demon knows exactly who Jesus is and calls him by name. And our Lord knows who he is and demonstrates his power over him by saying one word, quiet. This word, my brothers and sisters, this command that is given to the demon reminds us of a life of prayer that each and every day we are called to be quiet in the presence of God. There is so much busyness, so much that can distract us, that if we follow this command that the Lord gives us of quiet, we open ourselves up to the presence of God. But not always. I know for me, when I sit down to pray, when I do my best to make an attempt to be quiet, there's always distractions that come up. There's always things that can be like this demon, that can distract my focus from God. When that happens, we go back to realizing that God is in control. And whatever it is that causes us to be distracted, sidelined from prayer, 
we entrust that to God by simply saying, Lord, that is for you to help me with. Help me to deal with whatever it is that's bogging me down. Help me to renew my faith, my hope, and my love of you. Quiet. Just this past week, I started giving a lesson to the, the children in our school. The children, I believe it was the third grade, came in and they sat in the pews and I explained the rite of benediction for them. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and benediction. I explained the humeral veil, the cope, the different prayers, the monstrance. Monstrance is always a scary word because they think it's monster, but they say no, it comes from the word demonstration, to show. And then I say to them, let's invite Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament here on the altar, and let's sit here praying quietly to our Lord. I say, how long do you think we could sit here and just be peaceful in the presence of Jesus? How long do you think we could do that as our third graders? And so the suggestion was about a half hour. I said, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> I said, let's, let's look at, well, how about 20 minutes? No, that's not going to work. So we settled on 10 minutes. 10 minutes. That's what the teachers suggested, and that's what we went with. And it really was an amazing experience to sit in the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament with the children from our school. And they modeled for me, and they taught all of us who we are, that we are God's children, and that there is nothing that will ever, ever separate us from God, from God's love. And through a life of faith, by opening ourselves up to the presence of God in prayer, in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, possibly on Wednesday afternoons, coming and sitting quietly with the Lord Jesus, any time from 1 until 5 in the afternoon on Wednesdays here in our church, the Lord Jesus comes to us and says, Do not be afraid, for I love you, and I will always be with you. His fame spread everywhere throughout the entire region, and they were amazed and asked, What is this? A new teaching with authority. Together, in the presence of our loving God, we now profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life in the world to come. Amen. Relying on the help that comes to us from our God, we now bring before our loving God these petitions. For the grace of unity among the disciples of Jesus, that all may be one under the authority of the Lord, who has the power to drive out all the evil of the ages, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may not harden their hearts before the Lord, but worship him by their decisions to respect life and to guarantee, dig guarantee dignity and justice to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may understand that Jesus is the great prophet promised by God, one like us, yet having God's words in his mouth, and that we may truly listen to him with reverence and obedience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the consecrated life, that many more young women may see the joy and freedom of a life that is intent solely on pleasing the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may cast out the forces of evil which bind our dear ones with injustice and grief and grant healing and grace to all who have asked our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those enrolled in our book of prayers and for our faithful departed ones, that they may soon be purified and ready to come into the presence of the living God with thanksgiving and joy, especially Dorothy Young, sister of Elaine Veltree, and Thomas Virgo, and for Carol Gomer, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in thanksgiving for the outreach and the ministry of the food cupboard here at Holy Cross, that those who are served and our volunteers may be blessed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we know that you hear all the prayers that we, your church, bring before you. As we voice these prayers, we also humbly ask for the intercession of Mary, our Mother of Sorrows, who stood at the Holy Cross of her Son. We implore Mother Mary's intercession as we all pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and to manifest the resurrection. And so, with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and Matthew, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Mother of Sorrows, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
a prayer for spiritual communion for those who are watching at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like to now impart the blessing of St. Blaise on all of you here and those watching uh, from home. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, bishop and martyr, may God protect you from every disease of the throat and every infirmity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I wish you all a very uh, pleasant and relaxing uh, evening, and uh, stay warm. And I uh, hope you have a, a beautiful day tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. All hail the power of Jesus' name.